Hey guys, check out my camera slider that I built. This is a half hour long video. I'm gonna show you how to build it. And check out this freaking party trick. This is the best camera slider on YouTube. Mind is blown, blowing minds. Not only is my camera slider variable speed like any good motorized camera slider would be, it also automatically reverses direction when it reaches the end of the track. Now that is cool. So of course this whole automatic reverse deal is optional here, but I see the value in this because I can set it up and go do my thing and film myself and the camera slider will just keep going back and forth and I can keep working and I don't have to worry about it. Now alternatively, you can just use stop switches at the ends and then it will just stop and that's fine for time lapses and using it to film other people and other things when you can operate it. As you can see, it'll go pretty slow. Not quite slow enough for most time lapses, but this is a 56 RPM gear motor. They do make the same motor in 17 RPMs and I can swap them out. Not too many motorized camera sliders have the power to pull a camera up vertically, however mine does. But as you may notice, the camera is sideways and I would need to make a bracket to actually flip the tripod head. Got a couple test shots within my backyard coming up here I want to show you. Of course, no epic camera slider is complete without a custom telescoping stand. Linear guide. XL timing belt pulleys. DC gear motor. Quarter inch shafting and hub. XL timing belt. One inch flat aluminum. 12 volt lithium ion battery. PWM DC motor controller, optical sensor control circuit, dogs. This is a THK linear guide that I purchased on eBay. I paid a good 60 bucks for it and it is used from a machine. New, these things are very expensive, uh, but the carriage itself has four rows of circulating ball bearings in it and it glides on this track so smoothly uh, without any play or anything. Believe it or not, that little carriage will support a couple hundred pounds on one of these. And that shaft is self-supported, so you can attach stuff right to it. It has all those pre-drilled holes in it. So in my opinion, this thing is perfect for the base of a camera slider. This gear motor here is worth mentioning. This is a Cytron 56 RPM gear motor. The great thing is they make these in 17 RPM too. It's the same thing, so I could swap them out. If I want to do time lapse and make the motor go really, really slow, I can put the 17 RPM on here. Now I'd originally purchased a different gear motor off of eBay. It was a 46 RPM, but man, it turned out to be way too small as you can see. Um, and honestly, it would have worked just to pull the camera back and forth, but it would never work in vertical mode or anything else I want to do. You'll also need a tripod head. This is a Young Tang that I bought on eBay. Now, what I noticed about this from the picture is it's the exact same head that's on my Valbon tripod that I've had forever and I use all the time. And it has this, takes the same plates, so I can just put the same plate and swap my camera right back and forth. That's why I bought this one. I'll show you how to use the rest of these parts later, but for right now, let's build this thing. I'm making mounts for the motor and the idler pulley out of this one inch wide aluminum bar. And this is a carbide tooth saw blade, very common. And this will cut right through the aluminum, may have a dulling effect on the blade. So I use an old one, but this is a perfectly great way to cut aluminum. This is a dual ball bearing hub that will support the idler pulley. You see me here drilling a quarter inch hole for the shaft to go through. This 
ball bearing hub itself has four holes tapped for four millimeter screws that I will secure it to this aluminum bar with. I'm marking those basically by eyesight and I'll drill the holes bigger than I need because it's not going to be 100% accurate. Uh, ideally you would use a drill press for this and I was going to buy a drill press just for this. But then I decided no, most people aren't going to have a drill press so I'll do it with a drill too. Moving on to the mount for the motor, basically a very similar thing. You can see me there using a screw to gouge uh, lines in this aluminum to mark by eyesight where the holes need to go. Uh, and I got it pretty accurate. You still got to drill them bigger than you really need them just because it's not going to be 100% accurate. I'm using that same screw to center punch these marks. Uh, that's the poor man center punch. I do find you get a little bit better accuracy with this type of thing by starting off with a small drill bit and you have basically a guide hole and you can use your final size through there. I'm marking off where the shaft goes through. Center punching that with the poor man's center punch and then drilling it out with a 3 8 drill bit. My pulleys have a six millimeter bore. However, the shafting I got for the idler pulley is a quarter inch because they only have a quarter inch hub where I got it from. So I have to bore out the six millimeter bore to a quarter inch. It's just a quarter inch is just a little bigger than six millimeters. So I can just run a drill bit right through there and all good to go. And yes, I did leave that little mishap in here on purpose. Uh, you guys can go ahead and leave all your safety conscious comments in the comment section. I happen to get a kick out of those all the time. I cut out some half inch thick piece of wood for some spacers because I want my brackets to be a little lower so the pulleys aren't sticking way up and I just have to attach these brackets to my linear guide drilling some holes through it thankfully this linear guide has holes in it this makes it really easy the screws I'm using initially here are too big and they don't go down in the recess I had to get some number six these are number eights right here so I went and got some number six and swapped those out later and also I promise the song is almost done playing in the background this crappy music we're gonna at least switch it to another crappy song for you here soon Since I also got the motor bracket secured to the linear guide, I did a little test here. And yay, check this out. It works. Creep mode. Now I need to make a little platform to attach to the carriage on the linear guide and also attach my tripod head to, and of course the belt to. So 
This is going to do a lot of things here. I'm starting off by ripping a piece of plywood. This is Baltic birch plywood. Really amazing plywood to three and a half inches. So as you can see here, I actually need two little blocks of plywood and I'm starting off by marking by eye uh, where these holes go in the carriage. I'm going to drill those out, four holes, and then I'm going to countersink those so they can be mounted flush. I'll need a fifth hole in this block for the tripod stud to actually go through, and it's a standard quarter inch by 20 thread uh, pitch bolt. That second wooden block also needs the tripod stud hole to go through on the same spot. Since I couldn't find machine screws long enough to go through both of these blocks into the carriage, uh, they're just gonna have to go through the bottom block, so Got to mirror the mounting holes on the top block and drill them out so I can just tighten the screws down to the second one. As you can see here, I'm blasting these holes real big. This will be the top block just to get the screws down there so the screw heads fit down there. Drilling a recess for the nut to go down into on the stud for the tripod mount. Even though this quarter inch tripod stud here will actually hold these blocks together, I still put two wood screws uh, just to make sure these two blocks stay together and don't twist and stuff. I just need something to attach the belt to. It's got to come down a little lower. So I'm using this like half inch piece of PVC. It's a little thinner than that. It's the thinnest thing I could find. Uh, it's like a PVC sheet. In the future, I would like to make this out of steel, like a bracket and actually tap holes into the steel itself so I can screw some short little screws right into there. That would be nice. I'm using this cool little belt clip here from Servo City. Actually, a lot of these parts are from Servo City, and in the description, I got a link to where you can get all these parts. Uh, I'm not hiding it from you. Definitely buy all this stuff yourself and do this just like I'm doing it. The